Hello everyone, and we are doing another Anatomy of a Dick. And today we have with us our cinematographer and my long, long, long-term housemate, Aaron Chupin, who also appears in episode two. So I hear you're ovulating. Dick. Mango! Sleazy God. waiter. Sleazy. <laughs> I think it actually was sleazy waiter. Sleazy yeah. waiter. <laughs> yeah. And as a, as a uh, struggling filmmaker living in South Australia, being a sleazy waiter is something I've had a lot of practice at. Nailed the role. Nailed the Nailed role. The role. Yeah. So just for a little bit of context, Aaron has worked with us for years now. On, I mean, our, we did our first project together over a decade ago, like 12. 2006 or seven. Early 2007. Yeah, it's 2007. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and we've also lived together longer than I've ever had a romantic partner. It's a pretty smothering situation. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> we should just go make some new friends at some point. It's yeah. getting very oh, insular. Man, I don't know. Yeah. Um, just sort of talk through, you know, like, I guess Lucy and Dick as, as a concept, it was mm. always sort of that high concept, but mm. really based in reality. Like yeah. At its core as a sitcom. Well, I, had a, I had a thought last night about this, yeah. thinking about coming in. Lucy and Dick could be described as two things, a sitcom or sci-fi gets banded yeah. around a lot. And I think from very early on, even the first short, for me, it was a story about two friends. Yeah. One of them just happened to be a robot. So that whole thing of like, and it just happens to be a yeah. robot was always in my mind approaching this. Um, so I guess if there's a highfalutin term that was maybe in the back of my mind the whole time, it wasn't sci-fi, it was magic realism. Ooh, magic realism. Yeah. Ah, I found right, myself thinking one, yeah. about things yeah. like Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah. But, you know, things where there's a character who has almost a secret friend. Like, yeah. Dick's kind of like her secret friend that she doesn't share with other people. They don't go out... When they do go out, it's very kind of self-destructive yeah. and, and they ruin the potential yeah. for other people coming into their little That's good. Yeah. bubble. Is he crying? No, I'm not. Dick to Lucy, all right, I feel a little bit bad. Let's try to cheer this wanker up. Why don't you ask him about one of his hobbies? Over. Do you like nachos? We didn't have heaps of pre-production on this, and it was something that I kind of clicked within the first couple of days, was that the further Lucy goes into a kind of weird, toxic, insular state with Dick, yeah. the more stylized the shooting yeah. and the lighting would get. So, like, when she's at her office, we just shot that super straight. Yeah. Mm, mm. But when they are doing rebrand and yeah. everyone's gone insane, you know, everything is, like, orange and wide-angle lenses and, yeah. like, drop lights and everything just gets a whole lot stranger. Well, that was, I think, so. like, one, one thing, the season as a whole, the amount of times it does jump between genres but mm. does so kind of seamlessly. Like, mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not jarring. It's very, I guess, story... Uh, story sensitive mm -hmm. and so it's it, whatever's happening is in context like this, even the start that first episode like it starts off like a drama like a gritty drama that mm. you expect to see at like her walking through Adelaide like at night mm. like all, all gritty ending up her getting smacked in the head with the champagne court and flipping that on its head hey what the yeah Oh, fuck. I think that was out of a, just a desire to do yeah. a bit of world building as yeah. well before we just jump into this house. Um, I wanted to look for any opportunity to, I guess, open the scope. Yeah. Uh, the opening section with where it's much more sort of uh, indie film sci-fi, I guess we're yeah. channeling a bit of like her. Yes, and Spike Jonesy. Yeah, Spike yeah, Jonesy yeah, sort yeah. of stuff where there's just like incidental uh, sci-fi elements yeah. just to like drop you into a bit more of a broader... Uh, world before we get into this insular little yeah. world for like the next few episodes just Lucy and Dick, Lucy like in and Dick bubble exactly yeah. before we're in that bubble um, but also like you know yeah there's a swearing robot in this thing but there's also a whole lot of heart and I I think that opening in particular was a really good way to drop us into Lucy's mm. psyche yeah. before Dick comes in swearing yeah. and farting and, and blowing yeah. You know, yeah. champagne corks in her face yeah well, because when um, she's out in the world, it's quite harsh and cold. She's yeah. getting jostled. She's very slouched. She's alone. She's and depressed. Then she yeah. comes up into this very warm and cosy space. Exactly. Sort of all, yeah. Well, yeah. and also just, you know, the mechanics of filmmaking, you, you want to give the audience something to sympathise with their character immediately. And we can all relate to going home after dark on, and it sucks. Yeah. We all know what that feeling's yeah. like of like, oh, bloody hell. Like, yeah. I'm going home and I'm tired. 
I'm just going to have to do all this tomorrow. And then like, you get pinged in the head. And get, <laughs> you get home, yeah. And, like, there's something annoying when you get home. Yeah, But, yeah, like, I guess talk us through a little bit more. Like, so that sort of started it. But really, once mm. we warmed into those later episodes, those those genre jumps yeah. and flips were, were quite drastic depending on the episode. I mean, you talked about the rebrand one being pretty crazy. The Office, her getting fired, mm. that episode goes through crazy stuff in mm. terms of interrogation to standard Office stuff to flashbacks. Like, Well, I, I think you talked about it working kind of seamlessly. Yeah. Um, I think that comes from... Like, I wouldn't do that within an, a, 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 like a drama yeah. or another film, but the, the tone of Lucy and Dick is slightly cartoonified yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's not full cartoon and Lucy's performance is is 10% more elevated than it would yeah. be in a standard film so I think that extra stretch room allowed us to gosh push to the ropes and be like oh, let's yeah. do a little Scorsese today yeah. oh, we're, let's take it a little bit you know Law and Order here yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff like that right from the get go we always talked about Lucy and Dick having one toe sort of dipped in Looney Tunes logic mm. where um, when, we, when people throw things it whips like bang and smack and whack and bam and just little well, yeah, it's, intensifiers it's, it's there in the sound design yeah. when Dick yeah. throws his pen away it goes yeah you yeah. know everything but like the bin falling over and the dog barking yeah you know. <laughs> so yeah the office episode um i was super keen to look forward to, uh, i was really looking forward to because yeah it had so many different things going on it's this really manic sort of episode <laughs> where um what i mean like just lucy is racing to keep yeah. up with what's going on this 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 thing has happened yeah. she doesn't even really know what's happened or why it's happened yeah. or how it's happened and she's piecing it together it's, it's all happening faster than she can keep yeah. up um but yeah there was, it, it, we so we sort of shot it like a police procedural yeah. i was really excited I'm like this is an interrogation this is one of those awesome yeah. boggle episodes like from law and order where they've got the guy and they're sitting him down like all oh, right what really happened yeah. and you keep cutting back and forth between the scenes and the, and a bit of a rashomoni thing as yeah. well where well, Dick's got his version of events mm, yeah. and she's got her version of events. And it was an opportunity to really explicitly go into a subjective viewpoint yeah. in terms of the visuals. But this episode in particular, we kind of got to do that because we're going into Dick's bullshit version of yeah. events. Yeah. Or Lucy's bullshit Lucy's, version of it. So yeah. Lucy knows she's in trouble. And she's trying to recount her story and keep us and you know put a real happy just like I don't know really know what's happened but trust me everything was normal yeah. everything was great I'm a perfectly well adjusted person yeah. and yeah. so her flashback very exaggeratedly yeah. you know uh, is a is an attempt to well, it's, portray it's, that to her boss it's all you know? quite controlled so yeah. her flashback because she also in a way when talking to others would like to believe that she's in control of things so it's all on tripods and it's all on rails mm. so every move is like very controlled very still mm. mechanical mm. and all of her movements are also mimicking what the camera's doing so she, as the camera turns and twists she also turns and twists with it like mm-hmm. it's all timed really nicely yep. but then when we got to Dick's stuff we went completely handheld <laughs> and sort of like a weird Dutch tilt t- t- ankle and we come up with him and then we're following him in and that's all desaturated and grainy in his but it's all really glowy and shiny in hers and so you've got these two very different subjective accounts of what's taken place but it's being communicated with what we're doing with the camera as well yeah the fact that we do that sort of stuff has already been established yeah we had the freedom to go a little further we we open on goodfellas with burying a body in the woods with the Mm. headlights with those few really wacky sort of moments by license to then go a bit weird from time to time it was always as soon as you guys told me we're going to do a body in the boot yeah (laughs) my first i think the first thing i said was can we do it like goodfellas yeah yeah, yeah. i mean that'd be funny to like actually do side by side of a couple of uh because there's a handful of shots there that are direct like yeah. the the empty couch shot mm-hmm. as well i'm just talking about my own yeah. plagiarism <laughs> but no no but it's, it's more like yeah, yeah. Talk, what about well so it's, it's something that i want that i that i that i'd like to say is that if it was if i was going to have a closing statement it would just it would be that it's your job as a cinematographer not just to know about lenses and sensor sizes and what different lights are called but your job is to watch every movie ever made as much as you can every tv show every movie everything because that's where you learn that's that's your research yeah. mm. it's that stand on the shoulders of giants yeah, yeah. So there's a hundred years of cinema yeah and each of us stands on the shoulders of the pile of men and women that came before us making yeah. films and that's is how movies get better, I think. So, it's yeah. really good. Mm. And we did that a bunch. Yeah. And it's fun. It's just fun to do. And it's awesome shorthand. Yeah. You know? I wanted it to feel constructed. Yeah. You know, and 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 feel like there was more of a plan than just 
Put, yeah. let, let the funny people be funny. Well, this mm-hmm. Lucy and Dick could have very easily. We could have just been on that couch <laughs> for an hour and a half. Yeah, you know. There's probably a version of that that does work. 